Ever since I started medical school, my note-taking process has changed tremendously. I started off by making visually aesthetic notes that I would revise by reading through occasionally, but now I've streamlined my process to make it more efficient and much more fun and faster to study. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Jerzen. I am a third year medical student. In this video, I'm going to be going over the workflow that I use to get by in medical school. I'll be dividing up this workflow into three phases. First, you've got the learning phase, which is when I make notes from lectures and PowerPoints. Next comes a refining phase, which is when I would convert the notes that I made in the learning phase phase into something that I can revise efficiently later on. Finally, the revision phase, which is when in the future I would go through the notes again and use efficient study techniques like active recall and spaced repetition to make sure that what I'm learning sticks in my head. Quick note about active recalling spaced repetition. I've actually made a video about this earlier, so you can click the link up there or you can go down in the description. It's gonna be the first link down there and uh, you can find out more about active recall spaced repetition, which are basically the most efficient study techniques based on evidence. So that's that. All that out of the way, let's get started with the first phase, the learning phase. The learning phase consists of two applications, good notes and Notion. Let's start off with Notion. Notion is a note-taking application based around the idea of databases. This is great, in my opinion, for organizing your studies. With all the information that we have to study, it's really easy to get lost in the whole realm of things. So I use Notion to pretty much track everything and to keep myself in check and to not miss out on anything. So it just keeps everything a little organized. Basically Notion is my glorified revision calendar. So how I use Notion is I have a Kanban board in there. So the Kanban board has different columns for different study states of a certain topic. So when any topic goes into the Kanban board, it starts off as not studied yet, and it makes its way through the Kanban board until it gets to the final study state, which is called solid. I spend one day, typically Saturday, filling out the first column, which is all the topics that I haven't studied yet. And these are usually the topics that are coming up for the next week. So doing so gives me a bird's eye view of what I actually have to study. And then throughout the week, every single day, every single morning, I would uh, go through the Kanban board and pick out a topic, put it into my daily to-do list, and then you know figure out from there how much I'm gonna study today, how much I'm gonna push back the next day. And as soon as the topic is in my daily to-do list, it goes into the next tab, GoodNotes. I use GoodNotes on my 2019 iPad Air, and here's why I think the iPad is actually a really great tool for all students. The iPad sort of combines handwriting with digital note-taking. I type way faster than I write, so I realize my handwritten notes are way more concise and precise. Because of this, if I'm typing out my notes, I usually tend to go into autopilot and just type out everything the lecturer is saying. But when I'm handwriting my notes, I would only write down the important bits. But sometimes that's too slow for me and that's where the iPad really helps because the iPad allows you to annotate on PDFs and on lectures. So I don't necessarily have to write everything, I just have to write the things that aren't there in the lecture and the uh, things that are emphasized by the lecturer, I can just highlight it using, well, the app GoodNotes. It's pretty important for me to know where the important parts of a lecture are because I tend to push the Pareto principle on everything that I studied. That is that 20% of the content is probably gonna give you 80% of the grade. And these are mostly the basics and this doesn't apply to every single subject out there, but for most of them, it does. And having the iPad where I can just easily highlight all the important parts or just write them down really helps. The end result of my good notes are basically PDFs with all the important bits highlighted and all the extra bits that the lecturer has mentioned written down right beside it. This PDF is what I consider the ideal candidate for my note refinery, which is RemNote. If you don't know RemNote, RemNote is a note-taking application that will allow you to make flashcards out of your notes with a certain syntax. My main reason for choosing RemNote over other flashcard apps like Anki is basically time management. It ultimately takes me less time to make a flashcard in RemNote because using that certain syntax, I can just type my notes out in a certain way, or sometimes I can even write it in that certain way and just copy and paste it into RemNote note and it's automatically going to make a flashcard for me. I don't have to sit down and write all my notes, summarize them, and then convert them to flashcards like I used to do. This just shrinks down the entire process to maybe half the time. One tip that I would put in here is to try and convert all your notes from the annotated PDF into RemNote without looking. This sort of forces your brain to think about it and this is basically active recall. It's pretty important to understand that active recall is not applied to just revision. It can be applied to the, the entire process because active recall is essentially dredging up the information from your brain and then just remembering it without looking at it. And well, like the name implies, it's when you actively recall stuff. So what I would do is the annotated PDF would be on one side of the computer and Remno would be open on the other. And I would just try to write everything in my own words, compare both of them. And then from there, it's all done. To make my notes more revision friendly and more efficient with the whole revision process, I would hide them under questions and answers. And I would also add images and I would add mnemonics to help me remember stuff. If you wanna know more, you can know about how I make flashcards right here in this video. Next, we have the final step 
up the entire process and that's the revision phase. And this is again done by Remnote. Remnote's flashcards have a built-in spaced repetition algorithm. This is great because you don't really have to spend time figuring out when to study a certain topic. The application figures that out for you and just shows it to you. So if you are diligent enough and you can revise your flashcards every single day, get through the flashcard queue, you're gonna be learning as efficiently as possible using the spaced repetition system algorithm. I don't really confine my flashcard learning phase to my desk only. I would open up Remnote on my phone on Safari. I would go through my flashcards every time I'm waiting in line, every time I'm waiting for something, or if I'm just on the couch and I don't really know what to do, if I'm really bored, I would just go through a couple of flashcards. Doing this allows me to go through all my daily flashcards much more relaxed than, you know, just sitting at my desk going through 300 flashcards at the same time, because I know personally that I cannot do that. So this does help a lot. And what's cool is that every time I hit a milestone with my flashcard, Remnote tends to show me a GIF of cute dogs and you know, that's always a win, right? Anyway, that's kind of it. If you'd like to know more about Remnote, I actually have an entire series about it on this YouTube channel. So you can check it out right there. It's called the absolute basics of Remnote. If you like this kind of content, a subscribe and a like would be awesome. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Goodbye.